marshal you a strategy for dealing with series circuits that you can later apply to even combination circuits as long as you're only looking at the series part of that circuit. And we have a picture here that says determine the voltage drop and current through each resistor in this diagram. And you can see from this diagram that we have a 24 volt power source or battery, if you will. And we have three different resistors. They are in series, which means they're in a line, one and then the next and the next. There's no branches like parallel. And we have at first a 2 ohm resistor, that's R1. Resistor 2 is a 4 ohm resistor, and resistor 3 is a 6 ohm resistor. So what I'd like to do with these is to combine them into one equivalent resistance. And in series, the way you find equivalent resistance, and this is only true in series, in parallel there's a different rule, is just add up the values of all the resistors you have. And in this case, we have 3. And so the equivalent resistance in series, in this particular case, let's see, what do we have? We have a, a 2 ohm, and a 4, and a 6. The equivalent resistance is 12 ohms. And what that equivalent resistance means is it's the value of the resistor that you could replace all of these with, and the battery wouldn't know the difference. Meaning it's going to have the same current run to the battery, the battery's not going to know any different. So I'm going to basically imagine taking all three of these out, leaving the battery there, 24 volt battery still there, and replacing all of them with just one resistor that's equivalent to all three. And that would have to be that 12 ohm value. And so in this case, the current is the same in this imaginary circuit as it is in our real circuit. And so now at this point, there's only one resistor, there's only one voltage source, so the voltage drop across this is 24 volts. And so now you can use Ohm's law and solve for how much the current is going to be. And the current is the voltage drop divided by the resistance. So 24 over 12, so we're setting a 2 amp current. So that's how much is in this circuit. And remember we said that, that the same current is going to happen here, that the way equivalent resistance is defined is it's the resistor you could put in for all of these and not change the current. And so if we step back to this circuit, when you go backward in series, or backward to series, the thing that you're going to bring with all of these is the current. The current is the same in all devices in series. So since we solve for the current here, and that's the current through the battery, 2 amps, that 2 amps is just the same throughout the whole circuit. So I can say I1, the current through this, is 2 amps. I2, the current through this, is 2 amps. I can make a whole room here. And I3, the current through this, is 2 amps. So I've kind of gotten halfway done. I've solved the current in each resistor. And I want to find the voltage drop. And it's called like the pressure difference um, across each resistor from one side to the other. And so now I can use this own law thing, but written a different way, which is say that the voltage drop is I times R. And if I use these values, I'm going to get 4 volts across the first one, not much of a pressure difference, if you will. And if I use these numbers, I'm going to get 8 volts, so a little more voltage drop across the second resistor. And finally, if I use these numbers and multiply them, I'm going to get 12 volts. And so I've done everything the problem asked. Um, a good double check is to see that the current is the same throughout since it's in series. And another double check is to make sure that the voltage drops all add up to the source voltage, which it does as well. So again, in series, you figure out an equivalent resistance. And when you go back to your original circuit, the thing you bring with is the current. Had you done it in parallel, the thing that would be the same as the voltage drop.